Hi everyone, and welcome to Single Step English. My name is Steve. Since so many of us teachers and educators are now working online on different platforms uh, with our students, I thought I would share this activity I've had a lot of success with over the last few months with students. Our chosen platform is Google Classroom. I've been able to use Google Slides together with my seminar and other classes, and I'd like to share that with you today. Well, the first thing I want to do is take you to Google Classes, and here in Classwork, I'm going to just uh, create or add actually a template I've already made. So here I can hit Material, which will allow me to search for that. I'll give it a title. Again, this is for my American Culture Seminar, and we are talking about American music. And why don't we call this American Music Part 1. And here I'm going to hit Add. I'm going to look for Google Drive. And here is my template right here. And I can hit Add. I can post it right here. And of course, as you probably know, you could schedule this and assign it at a later time. Uh, whenever you'd like okay but in my case I'm just gonna post it right now so I could show you so I can go on here and click the slides here they are so one thing it's very important because you're sharing this with the class and you want them to have the ability to edit the document you have to go into here the share button and here I have the class set up so anyone who's registered with the class with the school address they can go in here and it says editor. Uh, if you click on this you'll see you don't want to have them as viewer because then they cannot create anything on the slides. So they have to be set as editor. Occasionally I've had trouble where students have written me and said they don't have access and I have to uh, grant them access by email. Okay I should explain my teaching context or situation. I'm a university educator, teacher in Japan so I'm teaching non-native speakers English uh, in this case, I, I have to spend a considerable amount of time going through the instructions. Uh, for this class, we initially, we start, we meet on Zoom. This is because I like to use the breakout rooms. Of course, now you can meet on Google as well. But we meet on Zoom, and I explain the instructions to them. And for this activity, these are the instructions. Uh, you will answer two questions from each topic below. Please use images and words on your slides to help explain the story. They're given the instructions. If they have any questions, they can ask me. All right, so for topic one, when did blues music start? Where did it start? And again, I'll take all students here and show them group one. Insert two to three slides here. Use words and images. After 15 minutes, please go to topic two and do the same thing from slide 14. So here's topic two. Their topic is, so just to show you, slide 14 the group would have worked on 12 and 13, and then the next group was on 14. Topic two, how did jazz music start in New Orleans? Which cultures were involved? Again, they'll just go in here, read the instructions, two to three slides. After 15 minutes, they'll go to topic three. Topic three is who are two famous blue singers? Show us their names, where they came from, and give us some YouTube links to their music. And they could do these links. They asked me they could create a QR code or just put the link in there, which is usually the simplest thing to do. Uh, topic four, who are two famous jazz singers? Show us their names, where they came from, and give us some YouTube links to their music. Their instructions, insert two to three slides. After 15 minutes, go to topic five. Do the same thing starting from slide 35. And the last topic, is where did country music start? When did it start? Instructions are here. Two to three slides. Use words and images. After 15 minutes, they go back to group one. So they're going to go to the top. At that point, we can see that topic one, the group has already made slides here. They've created two slides. The next group will work on seven and eight. Okay, next I'll show you some of the material my students made and we can talk a little bit about that. Here you can see group one was able to come in and answer their questions. When did blues music start? Where did it start? So they're able to come up with a sentence and an image to show a little map to show how blues grew from the south to other cities in the United States. And 
One of the beautiful things about using this activity with Google Slides, and we're all serving as editors, is that I can see in real time what they're doing with their sentences, any grammatical mistakes they're making, and I can just write in a question mark. And they know from me writing in a question mark or two question marks, there's something wrong with their sentence, and they talk about it together. Or I just simply join their room in Zoom and talk to them and, and ask them, are, are you sure about that sentence? Or you have a, a problem here? And they're able to solve it by themselves. So that's really been wonderful. Yeah, which in instruments were used, they were able to research that all on their own. I really didn't have to do anything at all. Uh, the next group, they were talking about, they were answering jazz music. Where did it start? What cultures were involved? So they wrote this sentence here, how did music start in New Orleans? And this sentence is actually a little awkward in English. So I realized this is a great teaching opportunity for me where I can take this sentence, pull it out, and then create an activity where I could teach the entire class uh, the proper way to say this, and I'll do that at the beginning of the next class. So again, it has kind of a multiplier effect where I can see a group struggle how to express something, and then I can teach the entire class. All right, the next one, which cultures were involved? And they gave their answers here. And again, I could go in and, and change things. All right, they put their musical instruments. The next group, topic three, two famous blues singers show us their names. They just put B.B. Uh, King, Eric Clapton, and then they did put a couple nice links here, which was great. And I've been stopping class and actually telling them to go watch 30 seconds, the beginning of the video, which they can do on their own devices, their own smartphone usually, or just uh, go into another window if they're using a personal computer at home. So that's been great too. And then I bring them back and say, well, what did you think about that music? How would you express it? What's a word you would use to express that type of music? And that's actually been really good, too, because they're learning how to talk about music, which is great. Okay, and the last one I'll just review. Topic four was jazz singers, very similar to topic three. And they chose Ella Fitzgerald and not King Cole. They didn't choose any links. So actually, this class we stopped. Uh, at this point, I assigned them homework to create the links. This group didn't do it, so I said, that's okay, just... Could you put that in as homework? And sure enough, they were able to do that because they're editors, and then we could watch it the next time. And the last group, topic five, country music. When did it start? Which instruments were used? And they just wrote it started in the southern part of the United States. They didn't quite pinpoint the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, that's something I could explain later. When did it start? About 1920. And the instruments that they mentioned, those. So by each group working on one topic and then moving to another, I've just found that they have to go and they learn about five different topics. So instead of just focusing all their class time on just researching them, presenting on one topic, in this case, they're able to actually go through and learn, I think, a lot more about American music. That's been my experience. All right, the last thing that I've asked students to do with this is to ask questions. And I'll just take you to this topic. So this was topic number two, jazz music and which cultures were involved. So I've asked the students to actually go in. If we're finishing up the topic, I've asked them to go into that topic. And what questions do you have remaining that you, you don't understand about jazz or blues uh, music or country music? This group here, these two students said, which other U.S. cities became popular for jazz music? They studied about New Orleans, but they were curious about which other cities jazz music became popular. Uh, this group here, what are the differences between blues music and jazz music? Really good question. And another group had a question here. I'll put this here. Uh, question, what is the difference between country music and bluegrass music? So that was actually a really good question. And it also forces me to go and, and research and look at which instruments were different for each of these music genres. So I think that's been wonderful as well. Overall, I've been really happy with this. I think by going to different topics, the students are probably, it seems they're more motivated because it's something new to learn about. And I, I think that's been really great. The, the feedback, I've asked them what they've thought about it. And they've said it, it's been good because it, the time slots are 10 or 15 minutes where they're jumping to new information. I think that's been great. I'm also trying to use this uh, as a review activity 
as well in my English language classes. I'm giving them a question and with a pair they have to answer that. Just to let you know, um, someone asked me earlier, I showed this to them, why did I, they asked me, why did you make your colors different for each topic? I just felt that by doing that, they're, they're well aware that we're moving on to a new topic. And I don't like to keep it white for all of those. It's just a little bit too plain. Another option is you could add audio if you'd like to. I mean, you could ask the students to make an audio file where they're explaining this and drop the audio file in here. I think that's great. And then when you play the presentation, it should all just play out here. Each slide would go and the person's voice is talking about that information. That's also one option you could use. Okay, let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. I think online learning, it's an ongoing process for all of us. And I love learning about new information. So please, if you have any comments or suggestions, write them below. Thanks so much for watching and See you next time.